Hello, Pure Heart family. I pray that you had a blessed Christmas, even though it may look different than usual. So glad that you could join us online today. And if you missed our Christmas Eve service, go ahead, go back and rewatch it on our Pure Heart app or on our YouTube channel. Today's service is a bit different and a little bit more laid back. Some worship, a devotional thought from Pastor Dan. And as you watch today's service, let's just take a moment to reflect back on 2020 and ask God to show us some moments and some things that we can be grateful for. I know there are some. And then as we approach 2021, let us have our hearts open to what God has for us and ways he wants us to break free from the things that have been holding us back. Welcome to church. Hey, what's up here, our family? We're so excited you guys are here with us today online. Hey, um, we hope you had a very Merry Christmas. Um, but hey, we're gonna worship together today. It looks a little bit different, but we're just gonna worship our God together wherever you're at, whatever space you're in, let's do it together. Father, we worship you today. God, it's what we long to do. Come on, let's sing this together. I'm caught up in your presence And I just wanna sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this hole Sing, I'm not here for blessings. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Cause Jesus, you don't owe me anything. And more than anything that you can do, I just want you. Sing, I'm sorry, and I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sing another song and take me back to where we start. I open up my heart to you. On, we sing that again. We sing, I'm sorry, full of faith. And I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sing another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. And this is our prayer to him today. Let's sing it. I'm caught up in your presence. And I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want today. God, there's nothing else we want more than you. I just want you and nothing else and nothing else nothing else will do. I just want you and nothing else and nothing else and nothing else will do come on and I just want you and nothing else and nothing else and nothing else will do I just want you. 
Father, we want nothing more than to be with you and to long in your presence. So, Father, we worship you today. This is our cry to him today. Sing it out. Oh, you worship you, I live. It's you worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Come on, it's real simple. It's our prayer to him. We sing it out. to be with you. We long to be in your presence. God, to sit at your feet, to worship, to magnify, and give your name glory. God, we know that no matter where we're at, whatever space we're in, God, that presence that we're singing about today, God is with us and will never leave us. So Father, we worship you and we give you all the praise, all the honor you deserve today because you are worthy of it all. God, we love you so much. It's in your great and mighty name that we said, amen. Welcome to Pure Heart. We're so glad that you joined us today. You have just dropped into a church that not only sees with Jesus' eyes, but has a heart to make a difference. We don't just wanna love people, we wanna see people's lives absolutely changed for the better. This is a church where we say it is okay to not be okay. You do not have to pretend and you don't have to stay stuck. This is a place where you can be honest and you can be real because we have real issues in this world, but we have a real God who cares about those issues and can transform those difficult things in our life and bring good out of bad situations. Thank you for being here with us today. We're so excited to get to know who you are and we want you to get to know who we are. God bless you. Well, I wanna welcome everybody from across the world, around our state, around our country, family, friends. Thank you for tuning in with us today. Also wanna welcome our Peoria campus. As always, we're so grateful to have you join us today. Thank you for coming out and being a part of the service. And then for Crossroads Recovery, guys, we love you so much. And really, this message today, I have you in mind in a great way. I think there's so much of this is gonna apply deeply to you and the journey that you're on to get free. And then to the Glendale campus. I mean, uh, normally, you know, I'm live there, or one of our other teaching pastors is live at the Glendale campus, but we're trying to give our, our staff, our team, all of our, as many of our volunteers as possible, a break and some rest, because what a crazy year and a crazy month it has been. And so I hope you had an amazing Christmas. But as we get ready to dive into 2021, I want to give us a moment of preparation because in the next week or so, we're gonna be thinking about New Year's resolutions and changes and things in our lives we wanna see different. Because here's the deal. All of us have some area of our life we would love to see changed. We'd love to see it get stronger, to get better, to just, we're just stuck. You've got an area of your life where you just feel stuck. And so I wanna talk about that for a little bit today. I wanna to look at this uh, through a parable that Jesus teaches in Luke chapter 13. In Luke chapter 13, Jesus teaches this very interesting parable. And in this parable, I want to show you three steps to get unstuck. I think this is going to be such a great time together. Let's pray, all right? Father, I thank you for this opportunity to bring your encouragement to people all over the world today. Lord, I pray that you use this simple message 
to start preparing our mind to think deeply about the change that we long for. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. Bring to our heart and mind for each individual tuning in today exactly where you want them to go, exactly how you want them to change, how you want them to grow, and let them know how much you love them, Lord. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Listen, if change, if growth was easy, everybody would do it. We wouldn't need millions and millions of books about how to get stronger, how to get faster, how to get smarter, how to change your life, how to get unstuck. But Jesus gives us a very simple three-step process. It's not easy, but it's so clear. And so context, Jesus is talking in this moment about repentance. And to repent means, it's it's a powerful word. Maybe you grew up and you heard preachers talking about repentance. Repentance means you're going one direction, you stop, you turn around, and you go a different direction. All of us have some area of our life in which we need to stop going that way, turn around, and go in a different direction. All of us have an area we need to change, grow, repent, get unstuck. So here's what Jesus says. He tells the story. He says, then he told this parable, Luke 13, verse 6. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went out to look for fruit on it, but he didn't find any. So this guy, he goes out, he's the owner of this vineyard, he's got a fig tree growing there, he enjoys figs, and he looks and there's no fruit growing on this tree. Watch his response. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, he said, for three years now, For three years now, I've been coming back to look for fruit on this stinking fig tree, and I haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil anymore? He's like, for three years now. And maybe in your life, you feel like it's been three years you've been trying to change this area of your life. (laughs) And with 2020, this whole year feels like three years in one. So maybe you've developed some habits that you want to see change as you go into 2021. You've got stuck in a rut. There's some things you just want to see different about your life. This guy's like, for three years I've been looking for fruit. For three years I've been wanting this tree to produce something good and it's just not producing it. Cut it down. Let it not waste the soil anymore. Watch what the gardener says to the owner of the vineyard. This is so good. He says, sir, the man replied, leave it alone. Just just, just calm down. Leave it alone for one more year. Watch what he says. I'll dig around it. I'll fertilize it. And if it bears fruit next year, great. If not, then we can go ahead and cut it down. So in this parable, Jesus gives us three great steps to get unstuck, to begin bearing fruit in an area of our life that has been barren, that's been a desert place, that hasn't been growing. Here's what he says. Dig around it, fertilize it, give it time. Let's just do that one more time. Wherever you're at in the world and in our services, say it out loud. Ready? Dig around it, fertilize it, give it time. Here we go. What is it we should be digging for? What is it that we're looking for? As we dig around, this is what the Holy Spirit said to me. As we're digging around that area of our life, what are you looking for? And here's what I would say. We're looking for the truth. We're looking for the why. We're going to dig around and dig up the truth. You see, if your car won't run, you take it to a mechanic. Unless you're Brian Bloom, a good friend of mine here on our team, I've known for many, many years, he can fix just about anything. But if you're me, all right, and your car doesn't run, you take it to a mechanic and they dig around underneath the hood and they look for what's wrong and then they find the issue, they find the truth, they find the problem and they discover it and they fix it. But there's something else about the mechanic. The mechanic knows what he's looking for or what she's looking for. That's what the mechanic knows. You take it to a mechanic because a mechanic has looked under a lot of car hoods and knows what to look for, knows how to problem solve, knows how to trouble shoot. So determining the truth is important, but we also need wise people in our lives who maybe have overcome that stuck area that you're in. If you're in a 12-step program or you're, you're looking to get free from drugs or addiction, you go to somebody, you have a sponsor because that sponsor is walking free in an area you want to walk free in. They're unstuck in an area where you're totally stuck and you can learn from them and you can grow from them. They discovered truth, they know the journey and so you go to them to get help and to get strength. Getting unstuck starts with the truth. Listen, if you want to lose 50 pounds, I wanna lose 50 pounds. If you wanna lose 50 pounds, if all you do is step on the scale and feel bad 
and then go and try again and go back and step on the scale and feel bad and go and try again, that's called a New Year's resolution. That's not how you get unstuck. As a matter of fact, most psychologists will tell you, most counselors will tell you, most research will tell you that if you want to gain weight, go on a diet and weigh yourself all the time. Take it from a man who knows. Many, many diets, lots of time on the scale. I've changed out many, many batteries on scales, all right? It keeps you stuck. Instead, instead, we have to start a process of asking questions like this. We've got to dig around our soul. Why did I eat that? What happened right before I turned to the food? What are my triggers? Where did this woundedness that I've discovered that I'm now medicating, where did it come from? When did it start? Why do I keep turning to food? You see, the question isn't, why am I overweight? Why am I stuck in my addiction? Why do I keep overspending? Why do I keep falling back into the trap of pornography? The question for me is, why do I overeat? It's not why I'm overweight. It's why do I overeat? And God has been doing a great work in my life in the last six months of really getting to the root of these issues. I know if you've been around Pure a long time, I've talked about this for a while, and I'm very transparent and very honest about my struggle in this area. There are so many areas of my life that God just set me free right away. So many areas of my life. But this is the one thing that I continue to wrestle with. I continue to try to work out. And I just want to share with you a couple good things that God has been really doing in my life, in my heart, in this stuck area of my life. Now listen, when it comes to truth, here, here, I read this the other day, I thought this was so good. A fool tries to adjust truth so they don't have to adjust to the truth. A fool tries to adjust. I've played so many mind games with myself about why I'm stuck, why I'm, and I say to myself, well, it's the only bad thing I do. I've given up so many things in my life. I've changed so many things about my life. I've grown so much in my life. I'm not out getting drunk in a bar. I'm not looking at pornography. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing, I make so many games. I play so many, I keep adjusting and making it look not so bad so they don't have to really adjust my heart to the truth that my overeating is gonna kill me just as quickly as almost anything else in my life that could be destructive. It's bad for me. And so we, a fool tries to adjust the truth so they don't have to adjust to the truth. Now, once the truth is dug up, the vineyard owner, the vineyard grower, I should say, the gardener, said um, what he said next is that we're going to apply fertilizer. He says, I'm going to dig around it. And then the gardener said, the next thing I'm going to do, he says to the owner of the fig tree, I'm going to fertilize it. What fertilizer have you been pouring into your soul? I want you to wrestle with that question for just a second. What fertilizer have you been pouring into your soul? And the vineyard owner had the most predictable response. The, the same response that all of us have to failure. And that is, you know what? Judgment. Cut it down. It's, you, it's worthless. It's just wasting the grounds, wasting the soil. Why give up more soil for this stinking tree? Judgment is usually our first response to failure. When we fail, we judge ourselves. When we fail, we feel the judgment of other people. Not, not a lot of fixing not a lot of healing takes place in a courtroom. It doesn't. When we judge ourselves or others judge us, what is our first response? I'll tell you what it is. It's anger. When you judge yourself, your soul immediately responds to that and anger fires up inside of you. And when anger rises, here's two buddies it brings along for the party, guilt and shame. That's right, anger brings along with it guilt and shame and they join the party and they make a mess of your soul. Listen to what James says about anger. In James chapter one, verses 19 through 21, this is what James says. My brothers and sisters, my dear brothers and sisters, take note, I love that statement. Like, pay attention to this, take note of this. Everyone, who does that involve? Everyone. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become, say it with me, angry. And then James says, because. Because what? Because, because why? Because anger hurts us, hurts others, destroys communication, robs us of peace, robs us of health. Yes, yes to all the above. The answer is D, all the above. Yes, all those things are true. But also, listen to what James says next. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. It doesn't produce the rightness, 
the right outcome. Here's the deal, James says, anger keeps us stuck. Anger keeps us stuck. I, I, I told our, I've told my kids all through their lives playing sports, I say this to them all the time. I said, anger never makes you a better teammate, a better athlete, and will never win a game. Anger is the worst thing that can take place in a game. I told my boys that in basketball, in volleyball, I tell that to my daughter in volleyball and in basketball as well. I said, listen, anger destroys you on the inside. When you get angry, and most athletes wrestle with this, when you get angry, here's what happens. You make dumb decisions. You shove a person when they're already out of bounds and get another 15 yard penalty. Anger makes you make bad decisions. Anger destroys your, destroys your thinking. Anger destroys team unity. Anger turns everybody towards each other rather than outward on winning the game. Anger is a waste of energy. And so anger, in my case, something the Lord's put on my heart here in the last couple of weeks. I was driving about three or four weeks ago. I don't know why it is that God speaks to me so much while I'm driving, but he does. And so I was driving the other day, about a month ago. As I was driving, all of a sudden, I was just kind of talking to the Lord a little bit about my health and the future and this issue I've been wrestling with for such a long time. And, and God has really been bringing some more layers of healing to this issue of my life of why I medicate with food. And as I was driving, the Lord just, this simple question came into my soul. Why are you so angry at yourself? And this is the thing that I've, I'm starting to see. There's a part of me that hates myself. I know it's, it's a, hate is a hard word for being overweight. I'm angry at myself that it's for so many years I keep talking about this and I don't see change. And I was sitting at the light at 67th Avenue in the 101. I don't know what it is about that intersection, but it's a very powerful intersection. And I'm sitting there and the Lord just says, it's not producing the change that you want. You hate, you're being mad at yourself is only keeping you stuck. When you look at yourself in the mirror, when you go put on that shirt that's a little bit too tight that Nicole and maybe the kids doing laundry and got one of your shirts, shrunk it in the wash, you're only causing yourself to stay more stuck. And this is what the Lord said to me, very clearly an impression on my heart. He says, I'm not angry at you for this. I'm not mad at you for being overweight. That was a really powerful moment. Yeah, yeah, I believe it breaks God's heart. He wants me to be healthy. He wants me to be strong. He wants me to turn to Him and not to food. But just think about it in the natural. If your child struggled with their weight, would you yell at them in anger? Do you think that would motivate them? Do you think that would change them? Do you think that would make them stronger? Has it ever helped somebody that was dealing with an addiction to have somebody just scream at them, tell them how disappointed they are in them? Has that ever really worked? It just brings more condemnation. It brings more judgment. It brings more anger. It brings more shame. It brings more guilt. We stay stuck. We would never want to use that. I mean, don't get me wrong. Some of you have experienced that with parents. Some of you experienced that with people in authority. But we all know this. When we're in our right heart, in our right mind, thinking clearly about what God would do, we know that that anger towards somebody is not going to produce change. It's just not. It's going to produce more condemnation. How crazy is it for us? That, how crazy is it for me that I keep doing that to myself? See, instead of the fertilizer of anger, this is what the Lord's put on my heart. It's something I know. I'm, I've been a pastor now for 26 years. I know this in my mind, but sometimes it has to go from my brain, what I know, down deep into my heart. And here's what the Holy Spirit reminded me of. From here forward, Dan, we're going to use the fertilizer of grace. And, and here's what grace is. Grace is two words. It's unmerited favor. Unmerited favor. Now, I just want to look at the word unmerited. The word unmerited means I don't bring anything to the party. It means I can't change myself. I can't fix my own issues. Somebody from the outside has got to bring strength, has got to step in and help me change. I'm convinced with all my heart, if you're new to church and you're new to listening online, someone invited you to listen today, listen to this, I am convinced it's Jesus himself that brings that change, that he strengthens me from the inside, and he has transformed many, many, many areas of my life. And I need to continue to remember, it's that unmerited favor 
that grace of God that's going to lift me and make me stronger. Um, it's kind of how fertilizer works. You see, fertilizer gives the plant or gives the tree what it cannot produce on its own, what it absolutely needs to grow. See, if the tree could produce that for themselves, the tree wouldn't have needed fertilizer. If the tree could have produced its own fertilizer, it would have done that, but it can't. The gardener had to come from outside and bring that fertilizer, place it in the soil, let it seep into the ground, be soaked up into the roots to make the tree strong and fruitful again. It's the same thing that God wants to do in our soul. And I'll be honest with you, or I should say extra honest with you and more transparent with you. Usually this time of year, I completely give in to the food thing. And I tell myself this, I tell myself every year, listen to how I adjust the truth. I say, it's been a really long year. Man, you've given out, given out, given out, given out, given out. It's time you take in. It's time you bless yourself. And so I do. I bless myself with mounds of cookies. I bless myself with all kinds of food. And it's just, I, de- I say to myself, I deserve this. Yeah, I deserve to gain more weight. I deserve to have more joint pain. I deserve to have more probably future issues with my body if I keep doing this. It's a ridiculous mindset. But I tell myself, oh, you know what? Just wait till January the 3rd. I, I don't want to go January the 1st. That's a big day with football. Got a lot of things to eat that day. I don't want to go January the 2nd because yeah, I'm recovering from the food. January the 3rd. That is a great day. Three is a very important number. The Trinity, three. Three is all, you know, you know what I'm talking about? All right? I can make a very biblical moment out of it. But here's what I know. I know this. This year, I've already started. I've already started. I'm going to the gym every day. I've changed my eating habits. I used to for, for probably, oof, extra transparent, 10 years on Thursday nights and Sunday nights. It's been my time. You know what my time is? My time is that all the kids are in bed, Nicole heads off to the bedroom, and it's my time. It's my remote, king of the castle, it's my TV, it's my chair, it's my food. I get my chips, salsa, I get my Hershey's uh, chocolate bar, I, and then I just, I start eating. It's my time. I, I numb out, I watch Netflix, I numb out, I watch recorded sports programs, I numb out, I watch cable news for a couple hours. I spend four or five hours just kind of vegging out, watching TV, and eating whatever I want. And you know what I've done for the last four weeks? Thursday night, I go to bed early. I get up early, and I go to the gym. I have never in my life done that before. But at that intersection at 67th Avenue in the 101, I felt the grace of God empower my soul, a new fertilizer of love and not shame and not condemnation. And Dan, why do you hate yourself so much? Or why are you so angry at yourself? I'm not angry with you. And I felt that begin to lift off my soul and it's empowered me. I'm working out. I've lost seven pounds, which is also a biblical number. I'm very excited about that. I just need to lose that four more times and I'll be at my goal weight, all right? So what am I saying to you? Dig around for the truth. Fertilize your heart with the grace of God. And finally, this is where the rubber meets the road. We're going to give it time. What did the the gardener say? He said, come on, give it one more year. And now this brings us to the most important decision we'll ever make in this life, to follow Jesus, to ask him to lead our lives. Here's the bottom line. He is the one who can help us get unstuck. He is that strength that we need on the inside that can change us forever. So here's the deal. When you're ready to make that decision, maybe for the first time, or maybe it's a rededication of your life, we simply start with a prayer, with a moment of commitment to Christ. So pray with this with me right now. Maybe you're making that decision for the first time, or maybe it's a rededication of your life to Christ. Only you and God know what that decision is. But if you're ready to say, Jesus, lead my life. I'm done doing it on my own. I'm tired of being stuck. Then invite his power to change you right now. Pray this with me in your heart. He hears you. Say this, Lord Jesus, Right now in this moment, I commit my life to you. Jesus, I trust you with my life, every area of my life, even the broken areas of my life. God, I need your strength. Forgive me of my sin. Just be honest with him right now. I know what my sin has done to my own soul. Would you heal me, Lord? Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for forgiving me. Jesus, fill me with your strength. Fill me with your power. Fill me with your hope and your love, your joy and your peace. Fill me, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. That is the greatest decision of your life. And now, I have two things, two things I want us to walk out 
as we finish this year. Two things. Over the next week or so, I want you to, first of all, I want you to think about this. I want you to stop and think about this parable of the fig tree. And I want you to ask yourself about those three steps. Is it digging around for the truth? Is it the fertilizer of grace? Now stop being angry at yourself. Or is it just giving yourself time, realizing that life is a process, taking that pressure of, I gotta change right now, the quick fix. What are those, what are those three steps is a new revelation for you today, a new step of growth for you today. For me, it was the issue of anger, and I need to pour a new fertilizer into my soul, the grace of God, that God's not angry at me, and I have to stop being angry at myself. But what is it for you? Think about that. Maybe talk about it with a friend. Get together, have coffee with somebody that you have a great relationship with, that you trust, that you can be honest with, and just talk about it. Have them watch this message. And then the two of you, the three of you, the four of you, whatever, sit down and really talk about what is that one of those three areas that you feel like that's the step I need to take. The second thing is this. What's your motivation? What is it that's going to motivate you? Why do you need to change? For me, keep it real, it's my family. It's the ministry at Pure Heart and future grandkids. And here's why I say that. I was at the gym the other day and I was working out and doing some crunches, all right? And um, as I finished the crunches, I went to get up and it seemed like everybody else around me was just hopping up like it was no big deal. It took me a little while partially because I was exhausted, but second, because I'm not as agile as I used to be. And I thought, oh my goodness, at this weight at 51 years of age, what's gonna happen in the next 10, 15, 20, 25 years? And I thought, I wanna be active for Nicole and I to be able to go out and enjoy life. I wanna be <clears throat> active for my kids. I, I wanna be strong and finish strong, be healthy for pure heart and this great adventure that we are on as a church. And then way down the road, years from now, after our kids are married, I like that progression, years from now, after they're married, they're gonna have kids. I'm gonna be a granddad, and I wanna be active with them. I wanna be able to play and run and have a great time with them. I don't wanna be sitting in a chair because I didn't take care of my body. I didn't take care of this, this temple that God gave me. And so that's my motivation. What's your motivation? Dig for it, think about it. What's gonna get you up in the morning and face those moments of getting unstuck that you need to face? as you head into 2021. I love you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Thanks for being a part of this service. I know we're in my office and you know those of you with ADD like me, you're probably looking around, seeing what I had in my bookshelf, what books I'm reading. But uh, thanks for joining us today. I pray that you have a strong week. Can't wait to see you next year. What a great message. As we prepare for this next year, will you please join me in prayer? Help me, Father, we just pray for each and every individual that feels like they're stuck, God. We pray that as this upcoming year they move forward, that you're gonna show them ways that they can come together in community, they can come closer to you and find new ways to be free. Areas of their life that are hangups and holdbacks that are preventing them from a deeper relationship with you, Heavenly Father. We just thank you, God, that you have a plan for them this year. Let them be focused on what you desire for them. We pray this in the name of Jesus. So if you have end of your tithes and offerings, you can give that in the Pure Heart app or at pureheart.org slash give. In 2020, we've been blown away at all the ministry opportunities that God has given Pure Heart and the ways he's expanded his message through our congregation around the world and his continued provision and blessings in ways that we never imagined. What's he gonna do in 2021 with this church in your life? I can't even imagine. But I know he has good plans for all of us as we become more like Christ for the sake of others in new and exciting ways. And we'll see you next year.